Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I know you guys have a lot of things you can do with your time and money, so I appreciate you coming and joining us here. Um, I put this meeting together last year just so we could have some friends uh, gather and learn about implantology. And so uh, my goal with that is that, you know, uh, we could all collectively share and learn from each other. And that's kind of what I'm wanting to do this year. Danny, thanks for making it. Glad you're here. Appreciate it. So, um, so this year, again, I just kind of reached out to a couple of the other people who run Facebook groups um, online like I do to say, hey, if we uh, maybe kind of put our minds together, we could do something, um, you know, even better than last year. Because last year, uh, you know, it was it was a good effort, but, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I didn't know what I was doing running an event. And for those who were there last year, probably could tell that. Uh, but it went well. We took some implant tours and and, uh, and shared about uh, the business of, of implant dentistry. This year, I kind of want to just focus on the nuts and bolts of Full Arch. Um, so this is really informal. I want this to be about, uh, everyone here learning and sharing and experiencing. So with that said, I'm not going to answer any questions during the presentation, but grab everybody in the hallway. We're here to learn from each other, uh, just because I'm on a timer and Shannon's going to keep us uh, quick with the timer. So I've got sponsors here in the exhibit hall. I want you guys to go visit them. Um, they're here because they're uh, a lot of them are personal friends of mine and or products that I use in my practice. So it's not necessarily taking a paycheck from them, although their sponsorships did help make this possible, but it's more so these are good companies. They're who me and my friends use in their businesses. Um, so give them a look, check them out. Um, you know, this, this implant dentistry is a small community. The more people you meet, the better you'll be. So um, introduce yourself to everybody here, talk shop. That's why we're here and hopefully to learn something. I want everybody to write this down real quick on a piece of paper. If you're in this room, you're a business owner or you're in a business at some point, um, I help blank. Just draw a big line. Get blank. Draw a big line. They're attracted to my brand unlike anyone else because blank and draw a big line. And we're going to fill that in in a minute. That's the only word of advice that I'm going to have for you guys today is when we fill this out, the rest of it is just going to be slides and teeth and blood. But I think this is an important one to think about because it's going to set the tone for the mindset of where we're at in dentistry, where we're at in implantology, where we're at with a business. So um, we're obviously all uh, business owners. So we have to think about business first. And we're clinicians. We have to think about the clinician side uh, equally is just as much. But this is an important topic here. I want you guys just to write this down. It's super simple. You're going to fill in this blank. This blank is up to you. It's going to be different for everybody in the room. But this is a template that I want you guys to check out. Uh, just one other quick note. I have not, uh, I, I put this in here. I don't know if I need to or not, but I've not taken any money from an implant company or any products at any point in my career. I hope to. So if anybody wants to sponsor me, bring on the money. Uh, but I make my money um, placing implants in my practice and uh, and now doing some speaking for Implant Pathway. Um, you know, Justin Moody has been uh, nice enough to offer me a job there. I haven't killed anybody yet. So hopefully he continues that. But um, I make my money in the office just like you guys. So I just want to make that clear. Um, if you see me put something up here, it's because I believe in it. It's not because I'm making money on anything. Okay, so the magic answer. Uh, everybody wants a magic answer, right? Unfortunately, I don't have one here for you guys today. So if you want to leave now, go ahead. Um, but what I'm going to do is show you a process uh, to put in place that will succeed over time, right? And a lot of problem is, is you know, uh, dentistry can be hard. Implant dentistry can be harder. A lot of people just aren't willing to put the grind in. I think everybody in this room is capable to do anything uh, in this room that we all can. I'm not the best uh, clinician in this room. I'm not the best uh, surgeon. I'm not the best anything in this room, but um, but I'm willing to do the work. And I think if you guys are too, you can get whatever results you want um, out of implant dentistry. So uh, marketing real quick. I'm going to jump through two minutes of marketing and then, then jump into slides. Uh, I feel it's important to touch on a little bit of the business because as I tell my patients, I just want to button the chair, right? Well, to get a button the chair, we got to we got to learn how to move them through a feeder process. So all your marketing should be doing is telling a story uh, about value, right? And you can determine what that value is that resonates with people enough that they want to give you money, right? And at the end of the day, that's what we're doing, exchanging our services that patients value for money. Um, the question is, how do you tell the story? Who do you tell it to? And how do you create value? And if you can, if you can nail that part down, um, you know, the rest of it's just filling in the blanks. So the secret for form, the secret uh, success formula, I'm a, I'm a big fisherman. I used to before I had kids was uh, who it is, right? Who's the, who's the fish? What pond are they swimming in? What bait do we want to hang in front of them? And I don't use that term 
uh, flippantly. I just mean, you know, what are we going to catch their attention with? And then where are we going to take them? So you see how we're taking the patient with us up the mountain? That's us helping them get to the top of their mountain. It's not for me to determine what that mountain is. It's for me to help kind of guide them up uh, kind of like a Sherpa, right? I'm going to take them to the top of the mountain. They get to tell me what mountain that is. And the dentistry is kind of usually that hill that we have to climb. So pick an industry where you're welcome. Uh, choose the right industry. Implant dentistry, in my opinion, is the hot industry right now. It's where we're all here because we have a, a passion for it. Um, get out of the mindset. You need to please the maximum amount of people. It's never going to happen, right? You don't need the biggest possible market. What you need to do is choose the smallest viable market, but then own it, okay? So I niche down. I niche down implant dentistry. I tell people what I do. That's what I am. Make it clear what you say you can do and then do it, okay? That's all marketing and industry stuff is. It's not going to be for everybody. And that's going to have to be something you guys are going to have to be okay with. General dentistry can be for everybody. Implantology is not. That's okay. Um, we get to be freelancers in implant dentistry and choose our cases, right? That's a good thing. It's also a bad thing. Um, of course, that's also when, you, when you're a category of one. When you're, the, when you're the go-to implant dentistry in your town, it's easy for patients to see you. Um, what you don't want to do is try to race to the bottom uh, because that's not a race you want to win. So being the cheapest, being the quickest, trying to outdo, um, you know, the, the cheap dentistry in town, that's not a race you're going to win. It's not even a race you want to be involved in. So don't even fall into that trap, okay? So raise the standard of care. Don't dumb it down for the masses. Just get in front of the, the right people. It doesn't have to be the most uh, uh, people with the most money, but it needs to be people that value your dentistry, right? Um, so let's dig in deeper. I like to tell people the riches are in the niches, okay? So when you want to do, um, when you want to out Amazon, Amazon, it's not going to happen, right? But if you create a small little boutique store that sells something very specific that Amazon can't provide, you can provide some value, right? So the part is to be specific. And I don't think I can be the best dentist in Kansas City. I don't even think I can be the best dentist in Leewood. But what I can do is try to be the best implant dentist within my zip code, right? And I think that's very achievable. So if I can try to be the best implant dentist in my zip code, I have a chance to provide good value. And I think that's um, what we want to do. But it also puts you on the hook because when I say I do implant dentistry and I do it well, um, that kind of raises the bar, right? I have to own my work. I have to be incredibly professional at what I do. So that's, you know, it, it, it's a double-edged sword, right? You want to be the best implant dentist. Okay, well, then you got to put in the work and truly be that. You can't be marketing, you know, implant dentistry and you're the best dentist and then, but, but you, you don't have the skills to back it up. So, so know what you're doing, do what you say and back up your work. And I put in here, it's, you know, it, to be the top 1%, in implant dentistry, it might take a combination of luck, magical talent, hard work, and a few lucky breaks. I, I don't have most of those, right? Um, but what you can do is you can get to the top 5%, but just gritting it out. Go to every seat you can. Find a mentor. Take courses. Do the right things. Invest in the right technology. So, you know, that's the goal here is to, is to get to the top of, uh, of where we can. Branding, we all start from zero, right? Um, the riches are in the niches. Niche down. Be okay saying we do implant dentistry. We do it really well. It's not for everybody, but this is what we do. That's okay. Some people are going to leave your office. Some people not might sign up for treatment. That's okay. But when the people they're looking for you find you, they're going to know you're the right spot. Okay. So we're going to get specific today. What do you make? What problems do you have they can solve? What are you promising? What differentiates you from others? Those are those things that we talked about. So here's this action item. This is the only one thing I want you to write down for my whole lecture. It's I, this is my my uh, fill in the blank here. I help blank get blank. They're attracted to my brand because anyone else blank. Okay. And that's, that's an easy thing to say, but here's me. I help my office. I help baby boomers get function, status, connection, and a feeling of wholeness through implant dentistry. That's kind of my why, right? That's what I set out my marketing to do. That's what my team sets out to do. That's kind of my passion and mission in my office. They're attracted to my brand because in a, unlike anyone else, I can deliver the experience, the quality, and the outcome in a way that fits their time, budget, and desires while understanding their true emotional and physical needs. Now, that's a lot of jargon. It's a lot of words. What does it mean? It basically means there's a specific set of people that I want to help, right? Might not be for everybody. Okay, I don't want 30-year-old kids in my office that don't have, uh, that had ortho and never had fillings. And, you know, th that's not the group that I want. I want to help this group of people that has a very specific need. They're a very specific group. Help them get up that mountain in a very specific way. So this is, every time I do marketing, I look back at this piece that I wrote down. I said, does my marketing fit this message? And if I'm spending money on marketing and it doesn't fit this message, then I'm not on the right page. So everything I sign up with, every time somebody brings me, well, should we, should Dr. Gordon, we, we want to pitch you a marketing ad. You guys get pitched every week for marketing. Bring it back to your core message. If it doesn't fit this, don't write the check. If it fits this, go for it, okay? 
it's time for the baby boomers. Luckily, there's a lot of them. Hopefully, they've got some money and hopefully they got bad failing teeth. That's where we come in, right? So how do we have the hook, the benefits, why you, the call to actions? I'm not going to go through all this because we've got a lot of slides to click through here today. Uh, we started a little late, but it's like, you know, how do they know they're in the right spot? What's the transformational process? You're selling the the change, right? You're selling people on the promise of this change. Uh, why you? You got to have social proof, uh, your patient stories, and then calls to actions, okay? So that's the secret formula. We all know that. I told you I wouldn't tell you the secret formula, but that's what it is. So for, for me, it's who? It's 40 to, five to 60, uh, 40 to 65 year olds that need their smile and their hope restored. Their marketing message, I put on a Google, Facebook, my website, ads, papers, flyers, whatever you want to work. Um, th this is, these are tactics. We're not going to get into tactics today. Uh, the bait, the bait's the transformational process, addressing their core feelings and overcoming their objections. All right. Um, the where, the transformational process sell the dream and provide um, social proof. Uh, so everybody needs a couple tools, tips, and tricks in their office. Some of my favorite instruments in the whole world are these Tatum Easy Outs. I've got a couple of them. They're just one of the magical instruments that uh, Tony and the group at Tatum can sell you. I've got my Vatec machine. Now that I've got my surgical assistant, we're drawing PRF all the time. I picked up this new Xperel, uh, long-lasting bupivacaine that's changing people's lives in my office. I have patients to stay numb for three days now. They come back. I did a full arch. They said, I never took one pain pill. That's a game changer, okay? Uh, implant concierge, Versa Burrs. Couldn't get them here this weekend. But these are just, you know, a, a few of my favorite things, right? Um, real quick, if you guys aren't doing PRF, I know Wade's probably got a whole presentation on PRF. Um, I think he invented the, the PRF necktie. So what we have here, though, is, you know, th this is something my surgical assistant loves to do. It empowers her. It helps healing. It speeds up the process. I, I bought this machine two years ago at a dental XP convention. It sat on my shelf for two years. And then I finally got the right staff member in my office to help me implement it. So now that we have that, we're doing it every week now. So she's pulling off these big old slugs you can see here. You know, um, I muted it because uh, I don't have this video edited, but she's pulling these slugs out and you can tell um, lots of good stuff here, right? This is fun stuff. Even if it's, um, you know, even if you're not doing this with every, every patient, get in your office, start getting comfortable with it, okay? Th there's just things that you can do. And here we are, here we are playing around with the slugs. Okay, so let's see here. Expirel, okay? This is long-lasting bupivacaine. I'm not sure how many of you guys know about it. I didn't know about all this stuff when I was a general dentist. This is all this, the secrets oral surgeons don't tell you, right? You you can go get this. Uh, you've got to get a. Uh, you've got to go hooked up with their company. You, you pull it up through a 10, 10 ml syringe. It comes out like uh, like a thick uh, viscous uh, milk, right? You draw it up um, in a specific way, and then you inject it into patients. So you pull it up, pulls up real thick. I'm not sure if you can tell that here, but it pulls up real thick. And then you change the tip. You have a different tip that you inject in. They're very specific on the tips because they're basically bupivacaine wrapped around fat molecules. And so there's very specific on the uh, uh, the thickness of the tips that you push it through so you don't mess up the chemistry that's going on. Uh, but this stuff's great. You, you, I don't know where you get it. You've got to go through the company and get it. Um, but, you know, we keep that in the fridge. It's fantastic stuff. So what it looks like in the mouth is very specific. It's not like um, when you infiltrate with articane and it spreads out through the whole arch, the whole arch is numb. It's very specific. So you have to stick it here, draw out, inject, uh, dispense while you're pulling out, and then move over. So you're basically sticking every, you know, five millimeters on the mouth because it doesn't diffuse. The fat molecules keep it locked in place, which is why it lasts for 72 hours. So it stays in place. You're just pushing it in, drawing it out, move over a tooth, push it in. I also drop uh, a couple on the lingual. And when I do this, my patients feel zero pain. I mean, I literally full thickness flap. I'm leveling their teeth, taking out all their teeth, suturing up, putting them in same day teeth, sending them home. I put them on steroids. I put them on uh, antibiotics. I do this. They come back three days later and say, I didn't have any pain. Their swelling's gone down. Um, complications are minimal and uh, everybody's happy. So when people are writing you a check and you're telling them things are going to work, this is just one extra thing that, that ensures um, they have confidence in you and you're treating people right. Okay, so that's been a game changer in my office as well. A um, couple other things, you know, communication versus clinical skills. Um, everybody in this off uh, in here has probably placed an implant, knows how to place an implant. Uh, however, the communication skills in implant dentistry rise exponentially. So what we need to do is learn to become leaders. Uh, I think they stole this side from um, Paul Homily as the tooth dentistry uh, right here takes a low amount of leadership, right? You're usually buying this on insurance. You know, anybody can say you you have one cavity, you have one filling, uh, you know, you know the, the, the dental shop on the corner can do any of that, right? But as we get into complete mastery, replacing uh, someone's full arch, doing uh, 50, 60, 70, you know, 
hundred thousand dollars worth of dentistry, the leadership goes up exponentially. So you have to master the communication, the leadership skills. And this is just kind of an inverse thing saying as your fees go up, your case acceptance goes down. And that's simply because a lot of offices, a lot of doctors, a lot of staff, a lot of facilities aren't trained in how to bring in those cases, how to manage those cases, how to sell those cases, how to complete those cases. So you could spend a whole lifetime practicing leadership skills and you probably should. So as we're taking all the CE, make sure you find people who, who can teach you the leadership skills, even outside of dentistry that are equally, if not more important than half the dentistry that we do. Treating people right. So the other part that you can't teach is how to care for people. You just have to learn to treat people right. You have to learn to care. Um, those, you know, I'd like to think those are inherent qualities why we became a dentist, but let's not realize, uh, let's not forget there's a person on the other end of the chair. So you got to learn how to treat people right. Another thing I've always been told is, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So if people offer me advice or tell me things or this and that, I don't always listen until they actually realize that they care about the person on the other end of the uh, of the thing listening. So um, just as you guys are probably here because I care about implant dentistry, I care about your success, your patients need to know the same thing, right? And then you need to give them hope, all right? Because a lot of patients coming in for implant dentistry, they're missing their teeth, they're missing their smile, but they really want hope restored. They want their, their mouth and smile transformed. So this guy is looking for this again. And this little piece right here is what we get to do, all right? So that's the exciting thing for us. Another important thing um, is getting testimonials. I, I can't tell you how important they are. So let's see, I don't even know if I got volume on this, but you know, the sweet old lady, I mean, wouldn't you just believe anything she said? She just says, Dr. Gordon's the best. Let me tell you about this. He gave me an implant. I mean, if she, if she, if you don't believe her, then who can you believe, right? And that's kind of why I was like, you know what? This, grandma's going to tell you what to do, right? I mean, doesn't grandma always tell you what to do? Um, so for whatever reason, I've lost my volume, but she's telling you like, go to Gordon. He's nice. He's a nice guy. I didn't believe him at first. He was kind of goofy, but he did what he said he was going to do. And he did it nice, and, and my teeth work, right? So look, here's Steve. He works in my office. We did this video shoot. Here we are. We're kind of playing around, having a good time. We did, oh, I've done two or three of these where we just book off the whole day, bring in a professional photographer, bring in a pro professional videographer, and do this stuff. Of course, you have to have patients who actually say nice things about you, which took me about 10 years to find. But once, once you find them, this is, this is one of the biggest things you can do is, is get video testimonials, get picture testimonials, because that's what's going to build your brand, Okay. Those are on my website. I put them on YouTube. And then if you do any other marketing, you can put them on Facebook or whatever. Um, those are just tactics. Like we don't have time to get in specific with that, but um, you can send Google ads. You can send to their microsites. You can do lots of stuff with them. Just get them. And then that's the hardest part. Figuring out what to do with them becomes easy once you get them. All right. But getting them is the hard part because you got to coordinate, call 10 patients you like, tell them to dress nice, close the office, pay a local video guy to come in. It's well worth the money. So um, get good at Telling stories, okay? Uh, story selling is another thing Paul taught me about. Uh, solve problems for people. You got to learn what the problems are. Listen to the patient and then then learn how to solve them. And then uh, believe, that, believe that the service you offer is more than they're going to cost, okay? And that's the problem with a lot of young dentists is they don't believe our services uh, should cost a lot and they don't understand the value behind their services, okay? So start with your why. Every business fundamentally be, uh, sells one thing and that one thing becomes the heart of your business. What the hardest part for dentists to do is to figure out uh, what their one thing is um, and then uh, project that message to the customers. Okay, so if you can find that one thing, it's kind of like uh, that crusty old guy in the, you know, the city slickers. If you find that one thing, make it clear what that one thing is, and and then and then be good at doing that one thing. Obviously, uh, that becomes a harder issue. So you know, everybody needs a hero story. Um, uh, you know, I, I touched on this last year, but um, I'm not going to go through my hero story. But but the whole point of it is be, become the hero of your own story. You know, something has to happen to your hero. They make a choice and they choose the good side or the dark side. I chose the dark side. Wade chose the good side. And uh, it's about overcoming odds, going through a self-transformation. Um, everybody can, can choose a different path, right? So um, whatever dentistry office you're in today, whatever type of dentistry you're doing, whatever you're at in life, you have a choice moving forward to step through a different door. Um, Sometimes it takes, you know, kick in the gut or kick in the shin to choose that door, but, you know, figure out what doors are available. That's why we're here to do, and then figure out which door to go through. Um, so my office, you know, uh, we, we, we did our logo. This is my consult room. Here's my waiting room. Here's the nice little area. You know, you know get organized. Take out some money. Up, improve your office. Put money in your facility. Put money in training. Get organized. Um, get models. I got these from Salvin. I've, I think I got these off the internet. Um, I think these are from Glidewell here. This is their Glidewell box. Uh, I forget who made these. These are for veneers that I don't like to do. 
Uh, here's some Teeth Express magazines. I'm making a, a magazine with Gilliard Robbins here. I'm going to be putting those magazines out uh, myself, so it'll be my patience and my face on these. Um, uh, mentors, friends, and colleagues. Find a group to be a part of. For me, that's the AID. Uh, I love the AID, and uh, my heart's in it. That's where I'm going to be for the next 30 years. Find a mentor. I've had plenty of mentors. Um, I, uh, hopefully one day I can mentor others, but right now I need a lot of mentoring um, and you can't get enough mentoring. Meet some friends and take lots of CE. That's the only advice I have in implant dentistry. So um, I was lucky enough to go up and hang out with my friend, Jack. He's been a good mentor of mine. Um, taught me everything he knows, uh, you know, about implant dentistry and, and, and just, you know, a great solid guy. Uh, another mentor of mine was Hilt Tatum. We took this trip to Paris last year with, with Tony. It was one of the best trips of my life. Um, took my wife and, uh, that's why we have a fourth child now. So the, the, the wine in France is real. We took one baby and came home with two. Uh, but you know, this man has forgotten more about implantology than I'll ever learn and find mentors who know what they're doing, who are in it to teach you the real, uh, implantology, selfless giving. Um, there's mentors out there, uh, but the world's, the world's full of phonies these days. So find the right guys, right. And surround yourself with the right people. Um, implant pathway. Here's, here's Philly G, Wade, uh, Justin, Steve, Frank, and Bart. These are some of my best friends. When people ask who my friends are, I don't have friends. Um, I have, I have these guys right here. You know, I don't, I don't talk to any of my high, I have one high school friend that I talk to. I don't think I have any college friends I talk to. These are my friends. These are who I hang out with my weekends. They share the same passion as me. Um, I always make them take a weird, awkward picture with me and post it every week. Uh, but, but these are my friends uh, because, Find people going through things similar to you, link on with them, and learn from each other. I think that's the most important thing. Here's uh, Shankar Iyer and Bira. She's my best friend from the Maxi course. We took the Maxi course together. Here's Ray. Um, you know, find friends. Go through things together. Life is a journey, and it's better when it's shared with other people. Here's Dr. Dunson. He's mentoring me. He'll be the president of the AAD next year. One of the most wonderful people uh, in implant dentistry. I met another selfless giving person. Uh, so find mentors. Here's Howard Ferran. Love the guy. He's just as crazy as me. I think that's why we get along. But, you know, everybody's got something to give uh, in, in, in dentistry. <clears throat> this is the first time I ever got a wad of cash like this. I felt so cool. I took a picture and sent it to my wife and I said, you don't get to touch any of this. It's got to go right to the bank. But, but the whole point is, is the sacrifice. It's all about time and money, right? We have so much time. We have so much money and so do our patients. But reinvest your time and money in your practice. Put it back in your training. Put it back. These are my Gordon dental glasses. Um, Put it back in your practice, put it back in your training, put it back in your staff, put it back in your systems. It's always paid off for me. I've always bought another machine, not a stupid machine, but I've always invested in technology. These people sitting right in front of me, pay them more than they're worth, get another person, hire people before you're ready for them, but hire the right people and it, it, will, it will turn itself back into the practice, right? It will give itself back into the practice. Let's see here. See this thing right here. This is it. Don't spin off the cash, put it back into the company, better training, better systems, better staff, better products. I know we as business owners pay ourselves last. That sucks. It's scary some months. Put it back into the system. Have faith. Do the right things. Um, faculty tours. We, to we toured Bio Horizons last year. Uh, amazing facility. Great people there. Love everything they're doing. Uh, here's, here's me and uh, John Minichetti. Another one with Shanker Iron. I always wore sweatpants. They made fun of me. The AID uh, maxi courses. I always showed up in workout gear. Um, but that's okay. You know, I'm comfortable in my own skin. Zimmer Biomet. We took it to Zimmer Biomet training. Um, we went to Noble BioCare. They wouldn't show me behind the curtain, uh, but I toured the facility anyway. Great place. It's all here in California. Implant Direct. Uh, another good uh, manufacturing tour. I, I think they shut this plant down. I think they're. I think they're all out of uh, Loma Linda now. So that was before. Um, Nisnik threw him out of the, out of town. Uh, Glidewell Lab. Uh, last year we took tour of the lab and the implant manufacturing facility. If you guys haven't been there, it's fantastic. Even if you don't place your stuff, go. Here's Sia Bai, another good buddy of mine. He doesn't work there anymore, but he's a good soul. Um, you you learn a lot about implants when you go to these places. Zest, you tour their facility. It's here in Carlsbad as well. They can take you to their manufacturing facility as well. Um. A lot of great stuff happening in California. This is why I choose this place. The weather's warm. The people are great. August is, lives around the corner. He'll attest to that. Everything's happening here in California. Folks, intention. Learn to code. Um, learn to do uh, immediate conversions. Obviously, this is a row. Um, everybody in this room probably places a different implant, and that's okay. Don't get hung up on the screw. Learn to do your craft right. See, everybody's got different surface treatments and all these different, what like, People want to get into a big mess about, a big stink about what screws do this and what, you know, they all have their nuances. Learn to learn to put your screws in right and they're all going to work. 
and plant concierge. I don't make my own guides. I have them do it. Uh, they do a great job. I think um, it just makes it dummy proof for those times that you need it. But you still have to be a skilled surgeon. Sometimes you got to throw the guy in the trash. You can't uh, just lean on the guide and think, you know, it's going to do everything for you. So my single implant scenario, my cost to the patients are right up here about four grand. I'm ended up with about three grand profit. So obviously it's a very profitable thing we do. I don't do two implant overdentures. I do four. Um, I charge about 16,000, 17,000 for my overdentures, but I make them good and they should last a lifetime. My profits are about 14,000. Full arch, I do all on six and I can profit 18. Now this sounds great, but I'll tell you there's, there's about a thousand appointments in there if you don't know what you're doing. So Get financing, you proceed finance. I break it down. Here's a $5,000 loan, 14, 20, and 46. We hand this to the patient depending on their FICO scores and all that. I don't know all the jumbo that goes with that, but they'll talk about this later. I give this to the patient. Say, okay, well, you need $22,000 with the dentistry. Your credit sucks. You're paying me $500 a month for 72 months. There you go. How can we get going? Patients come to my office. They usually need one implant. They need an overdenture. They need full arch case. So I had this thing printed off already. Here's the Gordon Dental full arch implant. You either need this or you need this. Everything's included. I'll take you from A to Z. One doctor, one office, one location, one fee. Patients like that. Simplify as many things as you can for your patients. They don't want to go here, here, and here. Have unknown costs, unknown scary faces, unknown things. Put it all in one place for one people. It's going to work, okay? Try something new. I encourage everybody to get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. You got to have a great team. This is one of my team members. Here's one of my other team members. He's coming on next board uh, next month to be a full-time um, lab tech for me. So two questions is, will it work? And is this what I'm supposed to do? I don't have the answers to that. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I know these are the right things that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I stick forward with it. So secret formula, keep things going. Branding, I still use a lot of the old media, direct mail, networking, TV, radio, newspaper. My clientele is old, so I stick with the old stuff, but you still got to have benchmarks. You still got to look at your ROI. You got to know where you're at with those kind of things, okay? So the ideas that we like to spread, they're like riders. They need a horse to travel. Okay. There's almost like a virus. They need a handshake or a sneeze or something to travel. Okay. So these are the tactics. We're not getting into them, but do you have a good idea? And is it, is it on the right medium? Okay. So those are the questions with your marketing. Does is my idea good? And is the medium at which I'm making it travel throughout the community good? Okay. So one's, um, you know, one's kind of like your overall message and one's your tactics, how you're putting it in the community. So you've got to look at both of those at each time saying, is my message on point and am I delivering it to the right people in the right medium? You know, a lot of things I learned is, is when I'm teaching these courses, people don't know how to extract teeth right. So the first thing you got to get did is extracting teeth right. The only thing I need to extract teeth typically is just set of easy out elevators and a 700 XXL from Salvin. So I can split teeth, crank them out with the elevators, and I'm good. You know, if I need retractors, great. I picked up these double hinge action rongers. Uh, I think Tony's got those too. And and, and this little uh, this little Liga Jet syringe. I mean, this is, this is all I need to extract teeth. And people say, you know, what about these things? I, I don't use these ever. You know, it's... It's something that get good at tracking teeth. Here's a couple casket impressions. If you're old school like me, I'm like a 90 year old in a in a 40 year old's body. You know, you can transfer stuff to your lab. You put the uh, you screw in the multi unit to analogs. Put these in. Get a casket sent off to your lab. So you, you there's end arounds to everything. Okay. Uh, making your temporaries, get creative. You know, people want teeth. I don't always load implants, but this is a, a, a lab composite made, just cement it in with cement and move on. Right. So give people what they want. Let's have some fun and talk about implant cases. I've got about 20 cases I'm going to fly through. Each of them are a little different just because every person is different. So people ask, well, what's your go-to scenario? You know, I, I, everybody comes in different state and everybody's going to a different state. So um, you, you just got to learn to see things differently in implantology. You got to get the right parts and pieces. Obviously, you got to have know your implants. Uh, I use a lot of locators and multi-units. Some people go direct to implant. You know, it's, it's, it's whatever works, but there's all kinds of different parts and pieces. There's straights, there's angle, there's, you know, I usually uh, plug in multi-units. We were having this conversation a week ago. My main multi-unit is, is 3.5 millimeters and, you know, level the bone, take out the teeth, put in three fives, put them in temps and get them going. But, um, you know, get the right parts and pieces. Sometimes it's tricky. You know, here, here's the dents of burrs. Learn how to do crestal sinus lifts. They're, they're a great way to do these little onesie uh, implants here. You got a low, low crest here and pop in some bone and push them up, and, then, and, and that's a great service to your patient. Uh, you know, BioHorizons has got this new 4.2 aggressively tapered implant. Um, so if you're into the internal hex, you know, you can rip out your tooth. This is a great service, same day. You can either make a composite shell or you can use the same tooth. This is what people are looking for. Someone to take them right to where they want to go same day. They walk them with a broken tooth. You know, they leave, uh, you know, in an, in an hour and a half with a tooth in their head. That's what people want. So, uh, you know, Pick parts and pieces that'll help you do that. It's, it's it's something you should get good at doing. Another favorite thing of mine is overdentures, right? You have patients come in and they've got they've got this in their mouth and they want 
They want something that stays in again. So, well, we can look at overdentures. You know, you you do uh, releasing incisions here, make crystal, flap them open, strip the teeth, put in four, suture them up. Same thing on the lower. You know, we're going to have teeth that are going to work there. I always do four on four. Uh, I never do two on the floor because I end up rocking and patients say, I paid you seven or $8,000 and my implants move. Okay, well, pay me 12 or 15 and they'll, they'll lock in. So, I never do two on the floor. I, I bought a prosthodontic practice. I inherited some two on the floors. They were always disappointed. So I always do four and I metal reinforce everything. So here's a patient, Phil. He came in. Obviously, he was super gluing his teeth back into this lower two tooth portion, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just a mess. And he said, you know, my upper denture is fine. I just want a new one that suctions good and an and over denture on the bottom. This is a this is a case you can you can make them happy 100 percent of the time here, right? So you put four implants on the bottom, you put the locators in. He's got a full palate, great suction, overdenture here. Uh, you know, this case is going to work 100% of the time. They're going to be happy every single time uh, that, that you provide this kind of care. You know, you need good keratinized tissue around these things. You need to level, I probably should have leveled the bone better. Uh, but, and then I metal reinforce all my overdentures so that they don't break, they don't split, they last a long time. I know there's all kinds of fancy new materials to do that with. Maybe somebody uh, can show you those, but I just tell my, I said metal mesh reinforce. Uh, I'll pick up the locators in the mouth. Nothing fancy. I use Root Lab in Leewood, Kansas, uh, where I live. Probably, the, uh, in my opinion, one of the best denture uh, offices there is. This gal here came into my office. She's uh, 25 years old. She's got no front teeth. I don't know what happened here, but it's she comes to me to fix it, right? Um, so he's looking at this. She's getting married. She was engaged. She can't go walking around like this. So, um, you know, what we did is she, she's walking around with, you know, broken abscesses, broken off teeth. Um, so what we did, we ended up doing socket shields, seven through 10, uh, freehand implant placement. I just cut those with 700 XXLs, uh, uh, left those in. You can see, you know, start your, start your new uh, whole uh, apically and lingually there, pack them with bone. Uh, we picked up temps with temps uh, syringes or temp cylinders, put in temps that day, uh, healed her up. Uh, I think I got even a little floor of the nose. So I got some bicortical stabilization. You just put your finger in their nose and stop when you feel the drill. And then um, you can see the CBCT here. I'm, I'm getting some good bone. I've got I've got stuff uh, on, on front and stuff behind. Here's my uh, screwed in uh, zirconia crowns. Here you can see the nice healing that I get with that because we did same day temps. We got socket shields preserved here and we've got a nice uh, implant connection. So I've got these these tip picks here. I had to take these pictures. You can see the blanching and the numbing because she was uh, she literally uh, left the state after I screwed these in. Go got married and I never saw her again. So I, I told her I want to see her back in five years so I could do uh, you see, she's a little numb. I said, I want to, I want to see you back in five years. And of course she won't, but uh, I'd love to follow this, this case up. But was, so we set her up for success there. Beautiful girl. She's going to, she's getting married and starting her life. Another gal, Kathy came in. Um, she'd had some bridges on top. Didn't want to recreate that scenario. Needed some teeth down here in the bottom. So, uh, you know, she had a, a, a broken down molar, missing teeth here, you know, maybe taken out early in life, you know, before surgery. So we're, this one's coming out. We're putting one, one here, one, one, one there. Um, I did this case guided. I think, you know, for multiple posteriors, you can do cases guided. And uh, I like TXT membranes if I'm covering up molars and then just, you know, move that keratinized tissue to the buckle, pick up the impressions. We've got two singles on each side. And now she's got flossing teeth in the back, right? So she's happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. Screw retain crowns or conia. They're going to last a long time. This guy was in my office last week. He had some failing teeth. He had these minis on the upper. He said the minis are doing fine. Well, you'd be the judge, but he wanted something for the lower. You can see he used to have six minis on top. Now he's down to four. Uh, I think these were implant direct interactives on the bottom. I think, uh, this this uh, case, we uh, just picked up the denture chair side. Later on, I restored it with Glidewell. I put these little uh, custom trays in here, looted these things together, picked up my impression. And, you know, heavy body in the impression tray. Um, we finished, uh, that lower, he came in office last week. He wants a new upper denture. I said, well, I'd really love to put some new implants in there. He won't let me. So we're making a new, uh, over denture on the minis, but that's fine. So here's the final bruxer. You see, we've got screw access holes, keratinized tissue. That was, that picture was, I think I took that picture Wednesday. So this is a couple years out and we're starting the upper. So, um, you know, it's fine. I'm not going to tell him he's wrong to restore those minis. I'm going to, I'm going to meet him where he's at. And if that fails, I'll say, I told you so. And we'll, we'll do the upper. Uh, but another guy here, here's, here's just the pilot guide, right? So I got a pilot guide. I buy uh, a twist drill from Sal and it stops at 19 millimeters. I tell my lab guy, stop it at 19. I plug in six holes. Uh, you can see here's my setup. Nothing fancy. Here's an old unit I've got. Here's uh, some, some stuff. Uh, here's my guide. This is, this is really all I need to do surgery. These two things here. And then, uh, you know, you pop in six holes. You got distal release, mid crestal incision, widen them up, drop in your screws. I did healing abutments on her because she had a denture. 
we sutured it up and we made a new overdenture. I didn't, I don't have the pictures for that. I think this is in my dad's office. So I've got six implants here. I loaded all six. I picked them all six up on uh, uh, at the same time chair side. And some people say, well, why four or six? Well, if she wants fixed later, they're there. It cost me an extra 300 bucks. You know, I figure what the hell. You got this uh, lady walks in with a broken number six patient of mine. We can, we can treat her same day. She's got a hole. I know what to stick in it. We've got this thing right here. We've got a temporary cylinder. We popped in the crown, picked it up same day. Here's the temporary crown we did. It's number six. It's, uh, you know, it's going to work. So here's the, here's where she walked in. Here's where she walked out. And here's the final. We did a PFM crown. Nothing fancy. Custom abutment, screw retained crown there. Uh, PFM still works. So you can see the healing we get when we do uh, immediate temps. And, and, and that, you, you know, this is a, uh, I don't place them in. This is a noble active. This is an older case. Uh, but you can see I got a PFM crown. She's got PFM everywhere else. So why not? It, it heals great. That You know, I mean, this isn't going to be on the, the cover of the aesthetic magazines, but it's going to work for her. Um, another guy walked in. This guy hit his face with a wrench. He's an auto mechanic. Um, he wanted an implant. So where do implants go? They go slightly lingual. You place them, you pack bone here. So that's what we did. We made a hole, made it slightly lingual, put in an implant, packed bone. Uh, I took an impression that day and I covered him up with a Cytoplast TXT 200. Uh, and then I put them in a Maryland bridge. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to do, if, if loading implants scares you, put them in a, in a Maryland bridge and start, start forming that tissue. And you can see, here's the implant. Here's this. It's this, I had the lab make this. It sat on my shelf for four months. Four months later, I took my little uh, nine or a 15 blade. I just twisted it in a circle. I put it right on top, twisted it, just carved out a little gum and I put in my temp. I healed it. Came back four to six weeks later. I took, see, this is what formed. And I took my impression. Here's what I formed. And then we took our shade. And here we are. Here's the final. That's going to work every time. So uh, he wouldn't let me dull it down. He said he's going to whiten, but you know how that goes. Everyone says, oh, we'll do a shade lighter and whiten. They never do. So this is probably the best case on an interior implant I ever did. It's on a it's on a 38-year-old auto mechanic uh, who's probably never going to smile. So it's unfortunate. Your best work probably goes to the people who don't need it. Uh, but that's okay. You know, it works for him every time. Uh, I had this video going last year. This is Dwight. He came in my office. Great guy. Terminal dentition. You're going to see this all day. He had some teeth down here we could keep. So I'm keeping uh, the canines on the lower. We took some records. Uh, we did a row conversion on him. PMMA, same day temps. Those are real nice because they don't pop and chip off. You know, they did guided so you can place your implants. I use long implants when we do same day loaded because uh, length matters. Uh, right down here, we, we trim these off and he's in a temp. I think I've placed some implants on the lower, but you know, you get your implants in the right spot. Um, you get abundant keratinized tissue. And then you put them in the final bridge, uh, minimizing our cantilevers. We got holes here. We got uh, him hooked up there. I've, I've placed some implants here on the lower, so I haven't restored the lowers yet, but that's life-changing for this guy. So he, uh, he didn't have a smile, and now he does. 58-year-old guy, uh, his name actually is Guy, so he came in terminal dentition. Now, you're going to see this all the time now. It's, it's drugs. It's, it's, it's lack of hygiene. I don't know what it is. I'm not here to judge. Uh, but I dropped in some screws, popped in some multiple units. Picked him up chair side, and here he is. He's got the he's got the G6 on top. Um, we picked him up chair side, fill it in with the PVS, and we're off and running. So here we are, same day temps. He's numb, so he can't smile. This is the lady I did a week or two ago. I shown this case because she she was in my chair. She wanted to schedule a uh, conversion like the next week. I said, well, I mean, you're you're rushing me here. I got to at least make a temporary denture. So I just threw some big fat putty in there, pulled some denture teeth off, stuck it on there, and sent it to the lab, and said, made a denture. Right, because she's literally scheduled in my office in seven days for an upper six. So I said, okay. So we had her in, and then you know some people might frown on this. Ramsey will probably tell me I can't do this, but I placed. I did a little ridge split here because she was thin here. So I ridge split and placed these two, and then these these four were in solid. So I thought, well, these four will carry these two. I figure if it doesn't work, I can fix it later. I got multi units uh, sutured up. I got closed tray impression copings here. Uh, my lab guy who's coming in does this. He uh, Then he pops these uh, analogs in, the closed tray impression copings. He fills it with this moulage. Uh, then he converts it out of the mouth. My patient's just sitting there chilling. Um, he does this stuff, and then we make we make our uh, we make our teeth. We deliver uh, while she's still sitting there. I've got five minutes. i got to hurry up. Here's Tom. Tom came in. Nice guy. Needed teeth. Uh, did another Rome uh, bone reduction guide. I'm doing less of these nowadays. Um uh, but it's nice because they have guided temps. I like the guided temps. I don't necessarily like being restricted with my surgery, uh, but I do like the guided temps. So we've got here, uh, you got nice PMA temps. They pick up nice. They drop in. Everything works. Um, you get these final restorations where, you know, things just work. Uh, here's another one. Sandra, she's a smoker. I was kind of worried about this case. We had a clear denture. We picked her up, put her in these. Uh, these are same-day converted dentures. 
Um, so, you know, you don't have to get fancy. We ended up losing one down here, so she's getting five on the lower six on top. I mean, she's still smoking a pack a day. I can't control that, but we still got fairly good gum tissue with this impression appointment, and here's her final bridges. You know, this is life-changing for this lady here. The, you know, you can't tell on the washout, but this, this lab work's changing her life. Um, I've got another one here, Courtney, 38-year-old female, came into my office. She'd had six implants placed by a general dentist in Kansas City. Four months later, they all failed. He wouldn't give her money back. Uh, so I laid some flaps. Uh, I did a guided surgery cause I wanted it perfect. Dropped in six screws, suture up, sent it home, said, we got to slow things down. You're a smoker. You had this case fail. She stopped smoking, uh, two months before this case. She said, I'm ready to do this for real. Stop smoking. I suture up. We took our time. Once these fully integrated, she got the G6. Uh, I, I, I just made a little slit here, put in the multi-units, put her in these little healing caps and, and she rode her temporary dentures for a while. Then I converted her dentures at the lab. Okay. Pop those in. She loved them. So then now we're going through making her uh, PV, uh, PMMAs. These are final PMMAs. I think her case is getting finished at Pro Smiles this week. But this is going to change this gal's life. She's going to do the bottom as soon as we deliver the uppers. So uh, I just said, hey, look, I don't, she wanted to give me uh, 50 grand. I said, no, no, give me 25. Let's make sure this works. You've already had this fail. Uh, I, I don't want that much pressure. So, uh, you know, give me half your money. We'll do the rest later. But now we're friends. She's going to do it. So this is another case. I did an immediate. I used her original tooth. I just stuck her original tooth back up there. Uh, I got a zirconia custom made here at Glidewell. You see the contours you get with immediate loading. Not my best work, but she's happy with it. Yeah, I mean, she came in with this. I mean, what else are you going to do? You're going to, you, I mean, people say you're going to save this tooth. I just laugh. There's Roy. He's missing all. Uh, he was had a couple failing here, a couple failing here. I said, look, we can get cute and give you an FP1 and do all this and that. It'll be $100,000. He's like, look, I've you know, I'm, I, I lay flooring for a living. I said, okay, well, we're going to take them all out. We're going to level your bone and we're going to deliver six. I don't feel bad about that, right? Um, you know, not everybody's an FP1 candidate. I have to have the skill. He's got to have the money, you know? I'm not sure, you know, if I'm lacking the skill or he's lacking the money, but, you know, I seem to be doing a fair amount of these these days because it's real. Uh, so I got six in. We did them fixed. Um, put them where he needs to go and, it, and he couldn't be happier. We got PMA temps here. Uh, they, they send you these printed try-ins, which is why I don't like using row anymore. They send you these printed try-ins. They, they don't look real, so it's hard to tell. Uh, but, you know, there's a Coney Bridge. It's good. Nobody ever shows you the underside, so I thought I would. Nobody's got any stones to show you their work. So here's the flat. You know, keep it flat. You know, if there's a lip, so what? It's not the end of the world. But try to keep it flat, right? Um, space them out. This guy's happy. I've got I uh, dropped two screws over here, another one over here, so I'll have molar and molar occlusion. Uh, you know, he laid floors his whole living. The guy, you know, the guy can... He's, he's giving me $50,000. That, that's a lot of trust. I don't take that lightly. This guy here, he came in. He's got the social six, right? He said, I want teeth. I said, holy cow. Um, this is in my early days. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even, I think, I didn't even level the bone. I didn't even think I knew how to do this back then. I was placing Nobel back then. That shows you how much I knew. So I, I placed four implants on the lower. I did a metal reinforced over. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. I placed these. I actually placed Nobel for a long time. They're a good product. I placed these lower um, metal overdenture. He said, I love it. It's great. Okay, I want to do the upper. So as back then, I still didn't know what I was doing. I'd never done a full case uh, immediate load before. So I said, okay, I'm going to bury two in the back. Uh, we're going to let those load. Then I'm going to rip out your front. Then we're going to put something in. So I did these, and then he's floating in the front. You can see that's not you know, it's not proper arch form. I was going to drop one here and drop one here later. Um, but he developed cancer, so we're waiting. I don't know. I, I'm not even sure. Uh, I try checking on him every now and then. But, you know, it's like meet people where that. Give them what they need. Do what needs to be done. Dentistry is not perfect, but neither is life. Okay, so we get a chance here. I got to wrap this thing up. 62-year-old female. I'm past time. Okay, I've got two more cases here. This is life-changing for her. She comes in very little bone. She got the, the G6 on top and five on the lower. I think I did these guided. We put in the temps, the cylinders, screwed in a denture. She, she's got nice heel. I'd like to get further back, but I, I wasn't going to go in and do a sinus lift just to get it. Here's her PMMA, or here's her... Uh, Here's her final lab work from Pro Smiles, and here she is here. So if you don't think your dentistry can't change people's lives, you're not you're not looking at your work uh, because your your dentistry can change people's lives. This is the last case here. This is 39 year old Evans. He came in. This is a charity case I did. The local church asked me if I'd help this guy. Uh, he he does some work at the uh, church, and uh, he's missing eight, nine, twelve, and fourteen. So he's missing his front two teeth, but that's that's the least of his worries because he's also missing his right arm and his right foot. Okay, so these teeth are an extension of his body. It's what he opens things with. They're like his right hand. So, okay, so I take that responsibility very seriously because he comes walking in and he's, he says, you know, I can't, I can't do stuff. This, this is his right hand right here. So when you say he's missing teeth eight and nine, I say, no, he's missing his right hand. Okay, so this is the impact that 
that your dentistry can have on these people. We need to take this serious. So I, I, I slowed things down. I said, you know, we got the rest of your life. I got to make this work. We extracted, we grafted, we had on this lousy flipper for a while, uh, you know, popped in my healing abutments, put the teeth in the right spot. And never, uh, this probably was guided because I wanted them perfect. I'm not that good at freehand. Uh, take your impressions. Uh, I made zircon, I made uh, custom abutments, metal, zirconia crowns fused together because I said, look, these things, they got to look good for his wife, but they got to be as strong as possible. Uh, screw retained crowns, dropped them in, dropped the Teflon tape composite. And so I took this day of because I literally seeded this last week. So don't judge me on these papillas. I hopefully fill in, but he doesn't even care because really what these are for him is they fill the smile and they allow him to you know, do his daily work, but these look, these look good. They put some characterization on, but you know, he's got, you know, he's, I think he was, he wasn't born in America. His water supply wasn't probably what it should have been. Uh, you know, his teeth aren't perfect. So find a lab that can give you some art and quality. I do a lot of my work with pro smiles, but this is life changing dentistry. Uh, and this is the fun thing. You know, these are the people that come up, they give you hugs after their dentistry. Um, they're the patients you want to see, you know, you work harder for those people than you do anybody in your office. They're also the hardest cases you'll do. So good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from poor judgment. I, I feel like I'm a testament. My whole life has been a, a testament to that. So, um, but don't be afraid to try things. You're going to fail at times. That's okay. Um, that's how we learn from our failures. Here's my contact information. Um, I've got cards, uh, I think up there, grab a business card. If you guys ever want to get a hold of me, I don't have all the answers, but I usually know somebody who does. Okay. And anytime you guys want to come visit me in Kansas city, we've got the MVP and then we got some good barbecue. My doors are always open to everybody. Anybody who wants to come visit me in Kansas City, I'm always open. Okay, so the invitation's there. And with that, thank you all very much.